Hi, I have a playlist for MSQ preparation. I have a playlist for MSQ for engineers or non-economics background students. I have a playlist for econometrics. I have a playlist for game theory. In this video, I will tell you the basic building blocks of mathematical economics. And in mathematical economics, the most important thing is the understanding of calculus. And when we use calculus in mathematical economics, we have to understand few things known as variables and parameters. Now, what exactly is the difference between a variable and a parameter? Because those things are quite usually the same when you look at it from a very different lens. And when you look at it from an economic modeling lens, they are entirely different things. So let's understand the difference between variable and parameters as far as mathematical economics is concerned and then they will probably go on to discuss how the difference plays out in the study of mathematical economics. So when I say that you have a function f a x which is equal to a x square and it is defined in the interval of real numbers. Now, when I say that A is a parameter, what I mean is that A can take values, let us say it can take values between 1, 2, 3, right? So, the thing is, I will change A and my function will change. But A over here is not really a variable. My variable is x. Right, the function is dependent on x. So I can also rewrite this as simply fx equal to ax square and use this definition of a. Or we can also write this as fx a. Now it is up to you to write it in this way or this way. Ultimately, you have to understand what you mean by these two things. You have to clearly define that what is the restriction on x and a and just by that definition you will have some kind of an idea that whether a is a parameter or x is the variable. Now what happens when we have this kind of a structure? So if I take a is equal to 1, my fx a or simply fx will be x square. If I take it 2, it will be 2x square. And if I take 3, it will be 3x squared. So you can understand that all these three are kind of different functions all together. But we are combining them by the help of the parameter. So you can think of it in this way that the parameter makes a lot of functions into one or kind of makes a family of functions. Now if I have to plot this, it will look something like this x square is something like this 2x square will be steeper than that 3x square will be also steeper than that so this is the family of functions family of this now this is what you need to understand now the thing over here is x is on real numbers so you also need to draw it for the negative numbers i'm not drawing it you will need to understand that we can draw it also. So that's the idea about parameters and variables. Now let's understand what's the mathematical economics part over here or rather what's the economic modeling aspect of this here. Let us say I tell you that uh, the supply of any commodity or a widget is given by ax square where x is your items number of items and this is your price right f i can say that this fx is simply your price now if i take x square this will be my supply the lower graph if i take 2x square my supply will be denoted by this one and for 3x square the above part. So essentially I am having steeper supply as I go from x square to 
to 3x square. Now, what is the economic interpretation of this? It means that I am charging higher price for the same number of goods as I grow from x square to 3x square. It means that this will obviously create a different kind of an equilibrium because let's say my demand is something like this fixed, right? Not exactly fixed, but demand line is fixed, demand curve is fixed. So in that case, your equilibrium will move from this point to this point to this point based on what is the value of A. Now, this obviously is a very toy kind of a representation of mathematical economics and what is the use of parameter. You can think of parameter as something like an exogenous variable. Now, obviously exogenous variable is a completely different treatment of variables and uh, you need to understand what is the difference between endogenous and exogenous to understand the subtlety of this idea. But still, you have some kind of a an idea here now that let's say my production facility has changed. So my supply curve will change. Let us say some kind of a disruption has happened in my factory. So my supply curve could change. Now there are, there are many, many various factors about what will happen with A and why it will happen. Let's not talk about them. Let's just put it in our mind that there is a way to write a family of functions. And that way is through the parameters and you don't need to think of parameters as variables because generally you are taking one value of a parameter at a point of time and considering all the possible inputs to that function and that is why there is a subtle difference between the parameter and the variable. Now the reason for uh, making this video is that uh, you might think that I am repeating the same line again and again, but this is something which if you don't understand clearly, your lots of questions on comparative statics or response to shock kind of economic questions. Like let's say I change one exogenous variable from 50 to 100. What will happen to my equilibrium? What will happen let's to my interest rates and things like those. So you need to understand this difference. So that is why I made this video. And if you want some kind of a video lecture series on mathematical economics or calculus for entrances, do comment below so that I might come up with such kind of a video. And yes, don't forget to leave your suggestions about future content and what kind of uh, preparation tips do you need. And uh, Probably if there is some kind of a question related to economics interest preparation, I have already made a video on that. So go check out the playlist and whenever you think that this is my question related to preparation, how should I prepare the PEB part of economics? You just Google the question which you have with honey of knowledge. Then there would be a lot of playlists like I have a playlist for variant, I have a playlist for economics, I have a playlist for MSQ preparation, I have a playlist for MSQ for engineers or non-economics background students, I have a playlist for econometrics, I have a playlist for game theory, I have a playlist of podcasts, I have a playlist of general videos. If you want something from my channel, it is highly likely it's already there. But if it's not there, do comment below with your suggestions.